Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating some divergent paths uh, like this thing you see over here. Pretty nice. This is a very on-trend kind of look. You see it a lot of places. I'm going to show you a fairly simple method to make this happen. There are, of course, infinite methods to do just about anything. We're going to start with these paths that kind of fly through space. Then we're going to add some layers of detail to make this feel a little bit more grounded. Even though there is no ground in space, we need something in there so we know which way we're going, how fast are we moving. And of course, if you get stuck in this tutorial, please ask me questions in the comments and I'll try to get you through. And if you make something cool out of these techniques, and I know you will, tweet them at me at EC Abrams or tag me on Instagram at EC Abrams on there as well. So if all of that sounds good, then don't divert yourself from this tutorial. Sorry. So for this method, and this is just one of many methods, we're gonna start in Illustrator drawing the paths that we want the shapes to travel along. We could instead move the objects around and then have paths flow from those, which also has its own advantages. But in this tutorial, we're gonna go for the simpler, more two-dimensional approach of letting the drawn paths drive the movement. That allows us to kind of art direct all of this movement, all of these lines, all the curves outside of After Effects really plan out the direction we want these things to go and then go in and make stuff move. We'll cover that other method if people are really into it. I guess let me know in the comments, but let's get started. Here in Illustrator, it's going to be a little bit more show and tell because I don't think you need to see me draw all these paths, but I'll tell you that in general, when I want to draw something like this that has a lot of this path animation, the artboard has to be large enough to accommodate all of the length of the path that we want to take. Now I usually start by drawing down a bunch of these 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 HD, if that's the final framing that we're going to deal with, grids. So I want to put a bunch of these boxes down so I can appreciate the framing that I'm going to be causing when I draw my paths. If this thing has to play on a one by one kind of Instagram screen, then you'd probably want to drop down some squares along your path. This is going to allow us to do things like put down a grid and then consider how our path is going to look when we look at our final composition. So planning out all of our compositions, all of our ratios, all of our rules in this space is a lot easier than trying to do it on the fly. So in here, we've got our, our grid elements. We're drawing in the start and the end position for these lines. And then for this, I set up a few rules about what I'm willing to do with these curves. So if I select one of these lines, you can see that they're all very regular curves. And I'm using this grid here to sort of determine how far I'm going to be pulling these Bezier handles to make sure that all of these paths are kind of in line and uniform with each other in some way. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. I also don't worry about the colors because these are really just here to figure out the shape and the path that we want to take. From there, we want to save our work. We want to make sure we've got our different paths on different layers because that's going to help us out. And then we're ready to import this into After Effects. Now you probably notice I've got Overlord, the extension open in here. Often I'll use that to transfer paths from Illustrator into After Effects. But for this, all we really need to do is open it up in here. So we'll just go in here and we'll just find those paths. We'll open those up and that's gonna give us this nice tall comp here. So even if our export is gonna be 16 by nine, we're gonna work on all of our animation in this big tall comp. We're going to start by grabbing those paths and we're going to go create, create shapes from vector layer. So this is taking that vector information from Illustrator and now we're turning it into information we can work with here in After Effects. Now there's a little bit of zeroing out I'm going to recommend you do. When you select a layer, you can hit UU and it'll bring up everything that's changed about that layer. In here, we have this transform of group one and that position is being changed. I like to zero that out, which is going to move all of that contents to zero, zero. And then the anchor point, I like to reset that to its default value, which you would think would snap this back right to where it belongs. But sometimes you have to readjust this stuff just to make sure it's all going right where you think it should be. Zeroing out these values is going to help us later on to avoid some confusion that can happen when we start using some little uh, scripts to move this stuff around. 
So there we go, we've got it all snapped back together. I'm holding down command when I move layers to snap them and everything's been kind of zeroed out. So now we want to take something and have it follow this path. We can select a layer, we can twirl into it, we can grab that path and now you can go window, create nulls from paths. This is a little script that's been shipping with After Effects for a while and the option we want to go with is trace path. When we click trace path, it's gonna create a null and we can see it out here. It's been plopped out. And wouldn't you know it, we've created that trace path by selecting the green path outline. And if I hit UU and look at all these properties, you can see that we have a progress here. This is the progress along the path. And you can see that that null is following along that path. Fantastic, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna just change these keyframes here to go from maybe zero to three. We can actually delete this expression in here because this is just causing this to loop if there are keyframes on here. So we don't need that. Everything else we can leave as it is. And now we just need to stick whatever object is gonna be traveling along the path to this layer. Now I think I'm just gonna double click up here, make a circle, make it, I don't know, 200 this is just to illustrate what's going on. Then we would pick whip from this object to that null, holding down shift so that all the properties get zeroed out and the child gets locked right on the parent. And then you can watch it go along the path. Notice it follows the tangent of the path as well. So if this were a triangle or a square, you could see it following the tangent of that path. So let me just solo these three things. So we're only dealing with this one case and then you can go ahead and repeat it for however many paths you have. But the green path, we want this to trim on as this layer is going. So thankfully, we can go ahead and select the trace path, just tap the U key once to bring up its keyframes. And now selecting the group, I'm gonna add a trim paths to it, twirl that open, take the end here, and I'm gonna pick whip that end percentage to the progress percentage, and we can't really see it super well here. So what I'll do is take this stroke, make it black, good, and make that thicker, great. We'll say like so. And now, as you can see, these two things are following each other along. Now, if you tweak the progress of this path, then the end here will follow along and everything will work out perfectly well as it seems to draw on this path, perfect. So then you'll repeat this for the other paths and you'll want to go into this progress, probably ease these keyframes. You'll probably wanna add some nuance to this so that the motion is a bit more exciting. It has points of acceleration, deceleration. Things get very interesting there. Let's cooking show this a little bit and move ahead to when we're ready to actually start following this path in a composition. We would go ahead and make a new comp, let's say, we could work in the 1080 by 1080 space. Maybe we're gonna put this on Instagram. Let's call this camera movement. We would then take our paths and rather than using that janky one that we just did, let's use the paths from the intro example that you would have seen. And right now we're not looking at anything because we're staring into the middle of this space. We're gonna make this 3D. We are going to make a new camera, 50 millimeter or whatever. The big important part is make sure it's a one node camera. Hit OK, call open its position, go ahead and separate those dimensions. Separating the dimensions is helpful. And now we're gonna dial that Y position down here. It's gonna come down, so we're gonna be looking at the start, the origin of our situation. 2700 sounds good. Let's set a keyframe there. If you remember from previously, the whole animation resolves at around three seconds, so we can actually take this to negative that number. Oh, that's a bit too far. Let me just back it up a little bit. Here we are. So now we're at the end. And now if we observe the animation, oh, we're way ahead of the thing as it starts to go. So we're gonna need to massage these keyframes. So now the camera is following along as these paths go and dip and move and go places. Pretty good. So far, so interesting. You're gonna want to go into the graph editor though and play around with these values. Maybe the camera should be getting off to a slow start because it didn't anticipate for this to be going so fast. And then it tries to accelerate to catch up and you really need to play around with the relationship between the camera speed and these object speed so that we can feel 
how quickly they're going. Are they accelerating? Are they decelerating? Are we accelerating and decelerating? So you're going to want to play around with that to find what actually feels right for what you're doing. If this is about chasing these things and they're getting ahead of us, you would probably want them at the top of the frame and you would adjust this curve or these points in order to make that happen. If we're traveling along with them, then we would probably change this curve slightly to make that happen. So it's all about the nuances of this curve. When should you be seeing what? Also consider moving in and out using the Z position. Whoa. So that can be nice if you want to take like a, a kind of uh, rising upwards as you go so we can get even more of a view of this thing and then maybe follow those down into the hole. Zoom. You could do that. Everything's on the table here. You are you are the master of this scene. Nothing will surprise you. You can move around as you like. But even with all of the camera movement, we're still a little bit lost right here in the middle. Uh, are we is the camera moving back and forth? What's happening? We don't have enough points out here in the scene to really tell us what's happening. We can sell this a lot better. So what I would recommend is having some kind of texture, some kind of detail that tells us we're moving from one area to another. We can accomplish that by just putting something in the background. So let's make a big rectangle. And with this rectangle, I'm going to want it to be three dimensional as well. So you can see it goes way up here. And I'm just going to go ahead, unlink the sizes of this rectangle, and I'm just going to make it super large, super large like this. So that takes up the whole space. And then what I think I will do is I will give it a gradient fill. Ooh, a cool gradient. And I'm just going to stretch these points to run from this corner up to this corner. Good. And now I'll change that fill and I'm going to use some of these libraries over here. Let's go from let's go from this dark color and now let's go to maybe I don't know, maybe this not quite as a dark color. And we'll see if this has improved our scene at all. So now we're going, yep, and it's becoming darker. Oh, and we're moving away. So I think what we'll want to do is actually expand this out. Keep expanding, keep expanding. So now our journey takes us from lightness into darkness. Good. That's okay. What I would really recommend is because we have a 3D layer and we have a 3D camera, we might as well do something that plays in 3D. If we can play with the depth here in some way, we'll know that these things are moving if there's a stationary thing for them to pass. It's for those reasons that if we go into the original intro, and again, this is going to be a little bit more showing and telling than doing for this part. Notice this little star field that we kind of blast through. Turn off these little rectangle layers. This star field makes us feel like we're moving because we're actually moving through something. We move past it and we can tell that these objects are moving relative to those other objects. So those are all just a little trap code form, a few spheres that have been put out into the world, a base form that is quite frankly, very large, but with not too many particles in them, you don't need that many particles in this kind of a box. And then just using the dispersed kind of make a little bit wacky and star like out there. And you end up with particles that are going to be in front of and behind your main actors here, your main subject. And that can add a nice little bit of depth as we're moving through this scene. If you don't have access to trap code particulars, you can also just drop some 3D layers out there to tell more of that story or you can use other particle systems as well. It's wide open. Another element that can really bring this together are these speed lines that as we're moving past zoom, 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 these tell the story of speed all on their own. Each of these is just a little rectangle and I'm animating the anchor point to cause these to drift past a little linear anchor point change that allows me to use their position to move them left and right, and then just adjust them in time ahead and behind to get this kind of staggered look. And that's what you can do for any object that's going to be flying past here. These don't have to be 3D at all. There doesn't have to be anything interesting about them. They're just kind of floating on by our view. But all these elements work together to convey this feeling of speed as we're going. We've got the camera movement, we've got objects for us to pass, and then we've got objects coming at us. And these kind of build up this feeling of progress, this feeling of change. And speaking of change, should you ever need to come back and alter some of these little trails? Because we've linked everything together, 
using expressions and using that path to become these nulls, you can grab points of these paths and move them around willy and nilly, and everything will adjust accordingly. We can add points, we can take some away. It doesn't have too big of an impact on the trace paths. Just remember that as you make this path longer or shorter, because we're measuring everything by percentage of path, it's going to change kind of the speed and timing nuances of this little object's journey along the path. But there aren't that many keyframes, so you should be okay. But a lot of this movement and a lot of what looks good about this really comes down to taking your time and designing what you want this movement to be, where you want these trails to go. But I hope this gets you where you want it to go. Thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. If you had any troubles making this happen, then please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. I'll try to answer all the comments when I'm able. And as always, if you make something cool with this, I would love to see it. Tweet it at me at EC Abrams or tag me on Instagram at EC Abrams on there too. If this is the kind of thing you enjoy learning, motion design, after effects, visual effects, then consider subscribing to this channel. So far, we're five out of five tutorials up every week here in 2020. We're keeping that streak going. So if you want to see when new things come up, make sure you turn on notifications. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.